Um, I, uh, I want to say a big thank you to ODI and Comic Relief for this timely report because um, it's, uh, I said to Kevin when I walked in, it's, it uh, reinforces everything that my, myself and those who've been involved with the Save Remittance Giving campaign, including some 50 Labour MPs who worked with me and the campaign, um, were concerned about. That, that this, is, this is what was behind what was going on with the changes, uh, which I will explain, um, uh, changes that were being introduced um, on, on regulation and remittance. Um, I got involved in this, this, this issue um, for three reasons. The first is a very personal one. I happen to be uh, the daughter of uh, immigrants who have spent their life giving remittance using money transfer companies uh, to support family members in different parts of Bangladesh where my family are from. Uh, and many in the British Bangladeshi community have done that. That's what's helped to uh, transform parts of the country where um, uh, people have gone to America or Europe and so on. And you can see that in terms of the difference that has made, and that's about economic development as well as social development that the Amba uh, High Commission has already talked about. So I've always been aware of the significant impact, economic and social impact, that remittance has had. And we know that, you will know that from the numbers, from the global uh, contribution that remittance makes, which eclipses development aid, uh, world development aid, um, put together into developing countries. And yet, this is ironically an area that still, sadly, it's beginning to become mainstream, but still pretty niche in the mindset of the international community, uh, Western donors, uh, and major NGOs. Um, I'm very glad that Oxfam helped us with the Save Remittance Giving campaign, but it took some time for other NGOs to catch on on what we were on about when the uh, Barclays Bank decision um, to stop, pretty much cancel, banking facilities to small and medium-sized money transfer companies was made um, this time last year. So I think there's a big education exercise for international NGOs, particularly the big ones, to really get behind this issue because it reinforces the work, the good work they do. Uh, they rely on uh, families um, supporting each other through remittance who keep people off the poverty, you know, uh, just above the poverty line, whether it's in Somaliland and Somalia uh, um, or in Rwanda or, or ac across Asia uh, as well. We've talked a lot about Africa and I understand the focus uh, of the report is, of course, on Africa, but also, you know, across other developing countries. So there's a big, big challenge for them. Um, and, the, and of course, specifically, the reason why I got involved, uh, both in terms of my brief, Shadow uh, International Development Brief at the time, but, but crucially, because I have a number of constituency organizations, small and medium-sized money transfer organizations, who came to see me when this decision was made by uh, Barclays. And they came from Pakistani-led ones, in uh, Bangladeshi ones and of course Somali ones, uh, including Dahab Shil. Um, and Mr. Abdurashid Diwali is here. He was one of the first people who came to see me along with a number of others because there was a direct impact which was going to take the lifeline away, particularly um, for uh, Somalis who were sending money. Uh, and so we were very concerned, particularly for those countries where there were no banking systems like Somalia, um, which ha sets out some unique problems. Um, so uh, there are some general challenges that have been posed by this report, but the, the other dimension is what happens in countries where you don't have a banking system either. Um, and in that context, what we found through, we did then decided to set up the Save Remittance Giving campaign, and we got through 130,000 uh, people signed, who signed petitions. And that was partly, um, you know, that was a huge credit. Some people are here who were involved in this campaign. In fact, probably most people got involved in some way. And, and this campaign um, was, was really credit to the, particularly the British Somali community. Um, they just took it on board to make it their own and um, got people from other communities, the South Asian community and others, involved. And 
um, you know, it was ingenious in terms of, um, you know, one of my favorite stories is sitting in a meeting and I said, just in jest, I said, we need a figurehead, we need someone well known to front this campaign. You know, uh, is anyone related to Mo Farah? <laughs> 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 and lo and behold, um, yeah. I won't I won't mention that person because I get lobbied to find Mo Farah every time someone wants something. Um, somebody managed to track him down, and we got him to front the campaign and support it. So it was a really powerful example of how the community, um, ordinary people, got together to uh, challenge a major multinational bank, which was frankly being unfair and making very illogical, irrational excuses for shutting down small and medium sized companies. So one of my one of the best examples we were given is, well, the American regulators are going to fine us as they have done um, HSBC. Uh, but you know, that was for money laundering, not to do with small me and medium sized companies, it was to do with HSBC busting sanctions. Um, then we had uh, another example, we were concerned about um, uh, money laundering uh, and not being able to track the movement of, and, and these are legitimate concerns of course, but there was an inconsistency. One of those two companies got fined by the American regulators 100 million pounds. But they weren't being, uh, their banking facilities were not being <coughs> shut by Barclays Bank or by HSBC. So there, was a, there is a double set of double standards about the way <coughs> banks have been operating. So that's what this campaign challenged. And what, where we ended up with was you know, a legal process that Dahab Shil is engaged in, um, which has delayed Barclays Bank from shutting down the banking facilities until October this year. So we managed to extend it for a whole year, which has meant that um, the route, which is Dahab Shil provides support to remittance into uh, remote places across Somalia, that that hasn't been shut down. Um, but this is only a short-term measure. In the meantime, the purpose behind <coughs> of, of trying to get this, this sort of extension, if you like, both from Barclays as well as through legal challenge, is that um, this gives an opportunity for the international community and finance ministers to work to find a long-term solution. And the key for a long-term solution, as well as all the recommendations, good recommendations that have been made by this in this report, for countries that don't have banking facilities, um, you need safe corridors, you need legitimate pathways to get money in. And that has to be done if we want to, if we want to deal with concerns about money laundering and, of course, counter-terrorism issues. Um, what the decision of some of the banks end up doing, the anti-competitive behavior, if you like, <coughs> is to make it make peop put people in an even more desperate situation because there aren't effective routes and affordable routes to getting money into the countries they're trying to get, get into, especially in post-conflict um, and, and conflict-affected countries. And so there is a big win here if the international community can come together. There is a uh, group that the government, UK government is leading and the World Bank is, it has formed um, to try and come up with a set of proposals that can address some of the market failures that you've all alluded to and the campaign that has exposed. Um, so what we want to see are proper, effective, safe routes for people to get money in. Uh, an opportunity for small and medium-sized companies to provide the competition that is desperately needed. Um, pressure on keeping the costs down, um, but also uh, making sure that there is where, where the market is failing. This is a really key role for international uh, finance for finance ministers to come together at the international forums to come up with an al alternative system in order for money flows to uh, be provided effectively through remittance in those countries. There is a clear market failure here and also major companies that are exploiting the fact that banks <laughs> are not willing to, clearing banks in the West are not willing to allow small and medium-sized money transfer companies to operate using the uh, concern around money laundering and counter-terrorism, albeit in some cases very legitimate, 
that that it ends up creating more problems and actually making the matter worse in terms of um, uh, people being prey to terrorist organizations and so on. Um, and uh, it leaves individuals having to do that due diligence themselves, which is dangerous and bad for our security interests as well as bad for the developing countries. And in terms of getting money in, in an affordable way, that, that is not feasible. So we need radical solutions from the international community. This is a good fertile area for developing, which is the case we've made to the UK government, for developing a radical idea if the market fails and doesn't, you know, there isn't effective competition. And this is the kind of area where the World Bank should be creating the facilities for people to be able to send money in cheaply um, and where people are protected from, uh, from uh, falling into the hands of um, groups and organizations, criminal organizations that want to, um, you know, that, that, that want to be engaged in financing that uh, could be illegal or much worse, you know, could promote terrorism. Thank you. Thank you very much.